Good morning, friends. This is Josh, and it is October 1st, 2020, and I hope you're doing well. I am reading through the Bible and the Quran and other related books. Um, at this moment, I'm reading The Life of Christ by Fulton J. Sheen. It's really been a good read. Um, enjoying it very much. Hope you can grab some coffee and just enjoy the words of this book. The Third Temptation The final assault took place on the mountaintop. It was the third attempt to divert him from his cross, this time by a plea for coexistence between good and evil. He had come to establish a kingdom on earth by acting as the lamb going to sacrifice. Why could he not choose a much quicker way of establishing his kingdom? By striking up a treaty which would give him all he desired, namely the world, but without the cross. Next the devil led him up and showed him in a flash all the kingdoms of the world. All this dominion will I give to you, he said, and the glory that goes with it, for it has been put in my hands and I can give it to anyone I choose. You have only to do homage to me, and it shall all be yours. Luke 4, 5-7 The words of Satan seem indeed very boastful. Had the kingdoms of the world really been delivered to him? Our Lord called Satan the prince of the world. But it was not God that had delivered any of the kingdoms of the world to him. Mankind had done so by sin. But even if Satan did, so to speak, rule the kingdoms of the earth by popular consent, it was not really within his power to give them to whomsoever he pleased. Satan was lying in order to tempt our Lord again from the cross by way of a shortcut. He was offering our Lord the world on one condition, that he worship Satan. Worship, of course, would imply service. The service would be this, that inasmuch as the kingdom of the world was under the power of sin, the new kingdom which our Lord would establish must be only a continuation of the old one. In short, he could have the earth provided he promised not to change it. He could have mankind as long as he promised not to redeem it. It was a kind of temptation that our blessed Lord would face later on when the people attempted to make him an earthly king. Jesus, aware that he meant to come and seize him, to proclaim him king, withdrew again to the hills by himself. John 6.15 And before Pilate he said that he would establish another kingdom but that it would not be one of the kingdoms that Satan could offer. When Pilate asked him, Art thou a king? Jesus replied, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If it did, my followers would be fighting to save me from arrest by the Jews. My kingly authority comes from elsewhere. John 18.36 the kingdom that Satan offered was of the world and not of the spirit. It would still be a kingdom of evil, and the hearts of his subjects would not be regenerated. Satan was saying in effect, You have come, O Christ, to win the world, but the world is already mine. I will give it to you if you will compromise and worship me. Forget your cross, the kingdom of heaven. If you want the world, it is at your feet. You will be hailed with louder hosannas than Jerusalem ever sang to its kings. And you will be spared the pains and sorrows of the cross of crucifixion. Our Lord, knowing that those kingdoms could be won only by his suffering and death, said to Satan, Be gone, Satan. Scripture says, You shall do homage to the Lord your God and worship him alone. 
Matthew 4.10. We can conjecture how these terse, uncompromising words must have sounded to Satan. Satan, you want worship, but to worship you is to serve you, and to serve you is slavery. I do not want your world, so long as it bears the terrible burden of guilt and all the kingdoms which you claim as yours, the hearts of your citizens, still long for something. I cannot give them namely peace of soul and unselfish love. I do not want your world, which you do not even own yourself. I am a revolutionist, too, as my mother sang in her Magnificat. I am a, in revolt against you, the prince of the world. But my revolution is not by the sword, thrust outward to conquer by force, but inward against sin and all the things that make war among men. I will fight against sin and all the things that make war against men. I will first conquer evil in the hearts of men, and then I shall conquer the world. I will conquer your world by going into the hearts of your dishonest tax collectors, your false judges, your commissioners, and I will redeem them from guilt and sin, and send them back clean to their professions. I shall tell them that it profits them nothing to win the whole world if they lose their immortal souls. You may keep your kingdoms for the moment, better the loss of all your kingdoms, of the whole world even, than the loss of a single soul. The kingdoms of the world must be elevated to the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God will not be dragged down to the level of the kingdoms of the world. All I, I now want of this earth is a place large enough to erect a cross, where I shall let you unfurl me before the crossroads of your world. I shall let you nail me in the name of the cities of Jerusalem, Athens, and Rome. But I will rise from the dead, and I will be discovered. But you will discover that you who seem to conquer have been crushed, as I march with victory on the wings of the morning. Satan, you are asking me to become Antichrist before this blasphemous request. Patience must give way to just anger. Get thee behind me, Satan. Our Lord came down from that mountain as poor as when he ascended it. When he had finished his earthly life and had risen from the dead, he would speak to his apostles on another mountain. The eleven disciples made their way to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to meet him. When, he saw, when they saw him, they fell prostrate before him, though some were doubtful. Jesus then came up and spoke to them. He said, full of authority, full authority in heaven and on earth has been committed to me. Go forward, therefore, and make all nations my disciples, baptize them anywhere, everywhere, in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. And be assured, I am with you always to the end of the world. To the end of time. Matthew twenty eight, eighteen through twenty.